In this tutorial, we'll show you how to make an essential piece of terrain for any Dark Ages gaming, a Viking longhouse. This is a fantastic looking centerpiece for any tabletop skirmish, and it can be made from scratch with cheap craft materials. This tutorial is designed for beginners, but even if you have zero terrain building experience, this is a good place to start because it'll teach you all the basic techniques. For this project, you'll want a pen, a knife, scissors, a hot glue gun, a ruler, foam core board, and leftover cardboard cereal or cracker box. Later in the build, we'll also use some balsa wood brown craft paints, and a piece of teddy bear fur. The fur is what we're going to use to represent a thatched roof. You can buy a small swatch of this material at any fabric store. Your longhouse can be any size and shape you want, and it helps to start with a simple sketch. I'll share the exact measurements of this longhouse in a minute. Once you settle on a good size, take your pen and ruler to draw the necessary pieces on the foam core. Using a sharp hobby knife, score the foam core board and cut out your pieces. A longhouse has six components, four walls, and two halves of the roof. You can see my six sections right here and all the measurements I use appear on the screen. Feel free to pause the video and write down these measurements as a good example for your longhouse. Next, I'm going to cut out a small notch in the middle of my roof sections. This notch is a smoke hole. Viking longhouses typically had a fire pit in the middle of the building and the smoke would rise up and escape from this central hole. Now we'll glue the four wall sections together with a hot glue gun. You can use white craft glue or anything you prefer, but I like hot glue because it dries almost instantly, allowing me to continue working. Within a minute, you should have all four walls assembled. Now we can dry fit the roof to make sure it fits evenly. When you're satisfied, add a quick bead of hot glue to one edge and snugly squeeze the roof sections together. Our Viking longhouse is starting to take shape. We're going to use this thin cardboard box to add some wood elements and planking. I've measured off roughly quarter inch strips, but there's no need for your planks to be perfect. This is a dark ages after all. You'll want to cut out a bunch of strips and then snip them into a variety of smaller lengths. We're going to glue those strips to the outside of the foam core. As you glue them into place, make sure to leave the rough brown facing on the cardboard exposed. This little bit of a texture will make painting and dry brushing much easier later on. And don't worry if the strips are too long. You can see all the mine sticking up here. We'll trim them off soon enough. As I work on the two ends of the building, I want to add some decorative wood beams. Balsa wood is a great option. Here you can see I trimmed out the doorway with balsa beams. Now I'll leave the glue to dry for a few hours. And we're back. With the glue dry, we can take some scissors and trim off the excess cardboard. Once the edges are cleaned up and evenly cut, I'm going to add a couple more pieces of balsa wood for additional decoration. Here's our final look. Now we need to finish the roof. Using hot glue, I'm going to add some balsa wood to the edges of the roof line, giving the appearance of heavy, thick wooden beams. Viking architecture often featured an extended diagonal cross pattern on the roof peaks, and we can model that with a little extra bit of balsa wood sticking up. Here's my finished roof. It's not strictly necessary, but I chose to add some decorative cross pieces around the smoke hole in the middle of the roof as well. And now it's thatch time. Teddy bear fur is a cheap, easy way to represent thatch. Cut a piece to fit each half of the roof, test the fit, and then start gluing it down. I'm just using Elmer's craft glue. Notice how my first half overlaps the roof ridge just a bit. Once both halves of the roof are covered in fur, we're going to mix water and glue in a cup. There's no exact science to this, but I use about three parts water to one part glue. You want it thin and runny. With an old paintbrush, liberally apply the watery glue mixture on the teddy bear fur. You're basically painting the roof with glue. This not only helps secure the fabric in place, it also makes it much easier to paint later on. Pay special attention to the roof ridge, making sure to go back at the end and weigh that seam down with a heavy extra dose of glue. Your roof is going to take a day to fully dry, but while it does, I'm going to make a door. Simply cut a scrap of thin cardboard from your cereal box and then cut a series of very thin strips. Glue those strips into place to mimic the look of a wooden door. When everything is dry, all you need to do is paint your longhouse. Here you can see two buildings. I'm preparing to paint the longhouse on the left and a Saxon hut on the right. We'll teach you how to make the hut on our next video. In this photo, you can see that I've already spray painted the thatched roof the dark brown color. The rest of the longhouse will be painted with these basic craft paints. We start with a dark brown and then layer on progressively lighter shades of color. The finished longhouse looks like this. The painting is the easy part, but if you want to review beginner techniques for layering, paint, and dry brushing, please watch our video tutorial on stone walls. That video will teach you basic terrain painting skills. Building this longhouse was a lot of fun, and it's a real centerpiece for our Raven Feast games. Thanks for watching, guys. You can learn to build stone walls here, and you can learn how to play our free Viking rules Raven Feast down here.